Hey, photographers. You have made this a difficult video to write, <laughs> but that's for a very good reason. I'm honored to report that there are now over 100,000 of you subscribing to this channel. An amazing number, beyond anything I could have imagined. I join a select group of over 180,000 YouTube creators who also have over 100,000 subscribers. And you have all been very kind to me, not only by subscribing, but with your comments. I'll admit that I'm sometimes embarrassed by the generosity of those comments. Well, at first, I didn't even understand that I would have subscribers. I thought that you would find a specific review of a camera that interested you and then move on. But you've humbled me with your interest and your support. In French, I would say mille fois merci. 1,000 thanks. But today, that's some mille fois merci. 100,000 thanks. Enough about me. Today, let's have a conversation about the value of cameras. Now, I was hoping to be able to go over these thoughts in a canoe, with the Humber River as a backdrop. That's currently not possible, but let's paddle on anyway. <laughs> Sometimes, you comment that the price of a camera is too high. Now, expensive is, of course, a relative term. You could mean expensive relative to other cameras. You could mean expensive relative to your credit card limit. But maybe not expensive compared to the over 2 million euros paid for a Leica at auction in 2018. And not as expensive as the top-of-the-line Phase 1 or Hasselblad models. And in fact, some would find even those really expensive cameras suitable, possibly reasonable, maybe even affordable. The world is full of expensive things. I don't want to be overly driven by possessions, but I had to look up Lady Gaga's microphone, the Telefunken U47, used in the recent One World broadcast. Clearly, it's not in my snack bracket. From cars to wines, from resorts to turntables, the world is full of things that are just too pricey for me to even consider. Partly because they exceed my credit limit, but also because they just don't represent that much value to me. I'm envious of those who have higher limits, but for objects like the U47, I'm most envious of those who can perceive and appreciate that level of quality. I can't. I can tell a cheap microphone from a good one, but once a certain level of quality is reached, it gets more and more difficult to detect any improvement, even with experience and training. That, of course, applies to cameras as well. While we'd all like to own the newest or most capable camera, for many of us, our photography budget doesn't allow us to reach those highest aspirations. And in many cases, the extra quality, maybe it's not even quality, we crave won't produce much perceptible improvement in our photos, if any. And there's a second factor as well. Most of us buy cameras for our personal enjoyment. We don't expect them to generate revenue for us. But there are those who do make some or all of their income from their cameras. That presents two very different value propositions. As a hobby, a camera's value is clearly less than its value as a professional tool. And to some extent, that valuation also determines the price. A camera designed for and used by professionals will clearly be more expensive. And that's my thesis. If you feel that a product is too expensive, it means that either its features exceed your needs or you won't earn sufficient revenue to justify its purchase. If it met your needs or was able to generate enough revenue to repay its cost, you might not even factor the price in your purchase decision. And the, the X factor in photography is not the cost of the camera. It's the talent that you bring your sense of composition, your timing, the vision that only you can provide. Let your artistry drive your craft, not your gear. 
in Canada, you could purchase a good quality new camera for about $700. And the majority of cameras I review are between one and $2,000. That's new. There are many bargains to be found in used cameras. And if that's what your budget allows, you are all set. And although the state of the art continues to advance, most cameras from the last five years are still very good choices. Unless you are already an experienced photographer, you don't need the ultimate in focus capability, high ISO, or in-body stabilization any more than I need that microphone. Don't chase specifications. If you're going to fuss over something, make it usability. Your camera should fit your hand nicely. Make sure the controls you'll use most often are easily accessed. An awkwardly placed on-off switch or menu button will be much more aggravating than a millisecond difference in focus response. And also, while cameras can be expensive, Remember that the price of the camera is not the sum total of your investment. There's also the related stuff you'll need to get the most out of your camera. Uh, first and foremost, that's lenses. It's my observation that many photographers own cameras that could provide much better quality images if they moved up from the lower quality lenses that they are using. And then, the basics. The total price of a camera also includes one or more batteries, plus some high quality memory cards. To me, it just doesn't make sense to purchase a great camera and outfit it with off-brand batteries and low quality cards to save a buck or two. And then the equipment that you use for your entire workflow, from your computer and printer to your backup system, should also be at the same level as your camera. The large high-resolution images from a high-end camera will be a challenge to work with on an older, slower computer with a small hard drive. Balance your budget across all of your devices. I hope that helps. So, oh, finally, in an episode about money, let me clarify how I get paid for creating these videos. Most of my revenue comes from Google AdWords. You see ads before, over, sometimes during and after my videos. In general, that generates less than one third of a cent per play. Now, if you watch all of the approximately 350 videos I've posted, I'll earn one Canadian dollar. Thank you. I also have an affiliate relationship with B&H Photo and Amazon. So when you use a link in the description and purchase a product, I get a small commission. Annually, that's less than 10% of the revenue I earn from Google. But if you have a local camera store, I recommend you give them the business. I get a few free products from accessory companies, but I've not been paid or compensated in any manner to produce any video for this channel. No one gets to review or approve any video before I post it. I have been offered sponsorships by the companies you've seen promoted on other channels. I've refused those offers. You come to see camera reviews, not paid promotions for web hosting companies. My goal is to provide detailed and honest content and not to waste your time. So that's it for today. Thanks again. You are an amazing group. Uh, for those whose avatars I recognize because they comment frequently, a special thanks. I value your friendship. And they know it when I mean that I say I reply to all civil comments and relevant questions. In May 2020, sending you out to take photographs until your batteries are empty or your cards are full may not be respectful of the requests made by your public health authorities. So while I encourage you to keep taking photos, please stay safe. Thanks for watching.